Hey everyday cooks, this is James, your everyday cook. Welcome back to my channel. Today, it's hot outside, and I'm gonna make you a vegetarian summer salad with quinoa, tomatoes, kale, optional, cucumbers, almonds, and cheese. Come cook with me. But before you come cook with me, make sure you like this video, share it with all your friends and family, of course, subscribe, 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 and then click the notification bell so you can come cook with me again. Okay, so for today's recipe, I went to the grocery store, got a little bit of feedback from locals at the grocery store of what they might want to learn, and one of them said a summer salad. So one of my favorites is a panzanella salad. This is also a recommendation for recommendation from one of our viewers, Joyce, and her daughter, Jennifer. Um, but my twist, because you know James always has to change things up, I was like, let's do a panzanella salad, but with quinoa. It's a whole grain, great to use, adds a little pizzazz, so we're doing a quinoa panzanella salad. So, to get started, I have a cup of quinoa. Uh, this is tri tri tri-colored quinoa um, that I have. I'm actually going to toast it first. So, um... I learned this with couscous or any type of like grain, even um, arborio rice that you use to make risotto. I always learn to toast things just like you would toast nuts. Brings out like a roasty, toasty flavor and kind of just gives depth to your dish. So I'm gonna do that first. I have a skillet on about medium heat. I'll use just a little bit of olive oil. You don't have to use olive oil, but this kind of enhances it. And while that is heating up, the pan's actually pretty hot. Um, but the way to know that oil's ready, this is kind of a chefy tip that I learned in a couple of the restaurants, it will kind of start to glisten a little bit and kind of have like a, not a wave, but you can tell the move, the oil is moving around. So you will, that's when you know the oil is ready, kind of moves on its own. So with that, I'm gonna toast this. And not for very long. You can hear the sizzle. Get a little spatula. And while this is toasting for just a couple minutes, I actually have another pot that we're going to cook, um, heat up our liquid so we can cook the quinoa. So cooking ratios for quinoa and the liquid is one cup of your grain and two cups of any liquid. Here, since we're doing a vegetarian style meal, I figured I'd use vegetable stock. One thing I learned or have learned throughout the years of cooking professionally and personally is if you have an opportunity to impart flavor, any kind of boiled things like pasta, rice, I always try and use broth if available um, to try and impart some flavor to instead of just using water. So I have vegetable broth, which I'll actually add to the pot. And you can tell that's a hot pot. Whoops, be careful. But we're gonna bring that up to a boil. And then we'll just keep an eye on our quinoa. I'm gonna use my cook cam so you can see what's happening. So we have our quinoa toasting and then our broth heating up. And with this, you don't need to toast it very long. You're just trying to kind of wake up the grains or whatever you're toasting, just wake them up just a tad because this will burn easily. And by the time it takes to toast this, our liquid should come up to a boil. One just jumped out of the pan. He did not want to be part of this party today. Those are just waking these up and getting toasted. I, with our street tacos, you remember I did make quinoa for those, and I actually toasted it after it was cooked, and it got like crispy and like a little bit of texture. We're gonna toast it before and then not do anything else with it because it's gonna be a cold salad that we're making. Kind of even it out a little bit so it's all evenly toasty roasty and our vegetable broth is starting to come to a simmer so we'll bring it to a boil once we add the quinoa we will then um, reduce the heat to a low and cook on 20 minutes kind of checking on it occasionally with grains and rice you kind of want to leave the lid 
on there so that way the, the residual steam and residual heat doesn't escape from the pot and then that's what really cooks your rice to perfection or any kind of grain or whatever the case may be that you're cooking. So I can actually hear our vegetable broth boiling. I can smell our quinoa toasting. And in our last video, or the video that I'm about to post uh, about bruschetta is cooking is not just visual. You know, you can see a cucumber, you can see your ingredients, but really hearing what's happening in your kitchen, whether in a restaurant or at home, or smelling what's happening, that is cute, not cute, signs of what, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to overcomplicate what I'm trying to explain. Just use all your senses and that's gonna help you be a better everyday cook. That's what I'm saying. So our water's boiling, our quinoa's toasted. So I'm actually gonna turn the heat down to low or two, move this, turn off the heat here, and then I'm gonna add this in. All right, so you put the lid on that, turn on low. We're gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. All right, so simmer on low for 20 minutes. I'm actually gonna use the same pan to toast another ingredient for our recipe, so you're saving on dishes. And since there's liquid here, the residual heat will evaporate that, and then we'll leave this on medium, so then we can toast our almonds for our salad. So we have about a cup of almonds. You can use walnuts, you can use pine nuts, you can use pecans or pecans, as we say in the style. Um, but I really like almonds. They're already slivered or sliced. Yeah, sliced. Um, but I'll toast these. But again, when you're toasting anything, nuts have high fat content. So just be cognizant of how long you're toasting the nuts. So I will just, without oil, you don't need oil this time. But just kind of move them around, keep an eye out them, on them. And then we'll add those to our salad. So the first part of a panzanella salad, which we're making at James's way with quinoa. I have a bowl and I'm going to cut up the cucumber. Now this is an English cucumber that I've already rinsed off. You can use regular cucumber, whatever you want, whatever you have. So I'm going to cut it in half just for feasibility sakes. It's a lot better to control instead of cutting up a long cucumber. So cut it in half. Again, we're always having control of our knife and keeping our fingers back. And then I cut this in quarters. Cut this in quarters. Move that to the side. And then we're just rocking the boat and just cutting it however thick or small you want. Some of them try and escape me. All right. And then you know who was not invited to his party? Mr. Bench Scraper. Because remember, we don't want to use our knife to pick up ingredients. So we have Mr. Bench Scraper there, put them to the side. And then again, with our other part of the cucumber. Okay, checking on our almonds. Now, clearly you don't wanna put your hand in a hot pan, but all I'm really doing is skimming the nuts around so they can get toasted. Please keep safety in mind. You know, I just did what I told you not to do, so. Practice what you preach. We'll call out Mr. Spider-Man. All right. All right, so the spatula there. And then the other half of our cucumber. And then with, this is an English cucumber, so the seeds aren't as large as like a normal cucumber. Um, you can definitely um, core this out with a spoon, like I showed you how to do with the tomatoes when we made salsa and bruschetta. Uh, you can definitely get rid of those large seeds if you don't want them, but this is pretty good. Again, be mindful of when you're chopping your ingredients. All right. This smells really good. And this is a really nice salad. I've made it quite a few times, taking it to some friends tomorrow. But it will it's great the same day you make it, and it lasts about two to three days. So I'll make this beginning of the work week and then have it for lunch, and it's a great um, meal to have for lunch or dinner or snack. It's vegetarian. Like I said, we were using the quinoa, which is a whole grain. It's a good meal all around. 
a little bit of grape tomatoes. You don't have to use grape tomatoes. You can use tricolor um, tomatoes that are grape that are really pretty. You can use regular tomato and you know get rid of the insides like I've told before. Or you can use Roma tomatoes, whatever you have. Or if you don't like tomatoes, you don't have to use tomatoes. This is a really versatile salad. I'm actually adding a new ingredient um, to this salad because normally I just do tomatoes and the cucumbers, but I'm actually going to add some uh, red kale, which really it looks purple. So just like red onion. Is it red or is it purple? Comment below if you think it's a red onion, purple onion, or if this is purple kale or red kale. We'll let you decide. And let's not forget about our almonds. And they're smelling good. They're looking good. I'm going to pull the cook cam so you can see it from my view. So our nuts are looking good. In. All right, so we'll continue to chop these grape tomatoes. All right, we'll recycle this. And then our nuts are pretty much done. I'm actually going to take them off the heat, and this pan will have a re residual heat factor to it. Um, so these will to toast just a little bit more, but they're pretty much where they need to be at. So I will set those aside. Actually, I won't because this pan's too hot. And I've lost a nut. He didn't want to be part of the party either. So the quinoa and the almonds are not on board for what's happening today. And that is a hot pan, so be careful. Okay, so now we're going to tackle kale. I've already washed this. There's a million different variety, not a million, that's not scientific, but there's a lot of different varieties of kale. I was actually looking for dinosaur kale, which is flat, but then this kind of poked my interest. So we have kale, red kale, which it looks purple. Stems are purple, but okay. Debate we'll solve later. I'm not going to use all of this, but the good thing about kale, it's great in the salad, and that's why I included it, um, because it's hearty. It won't break down like lettuce when you, because we're going to add a dressing to the salad. And it just adds like a great, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's some bitterness, some leafiness to it. And it adds like a little crunch factor, just like the cucumbers do. So I was like, we're going to include it today. The one thing I want to um, advise you about kale, there's a very thick, fibrous stem that you don't ever want to have when you're cooking kale, eating it raw. So what you do is you just slide your finger down and that stem just comes off. And then just like we chiffonaded our herbs in a previous episode, that's how we're going to cut up our kale to keep control of it. The kale is stuck in my tooth, so that's why I'm talking the way I'm talking. I'm trying to get out of my tooth. Don't want a piece of green kale in my teeth while I'm filming our cooking show. Okay, so I'm going to use about half this because we don't need all this. You can put this in a soup. Again, making another little salad of it, so that's what we'll do. So I've layered all of our leaves for our salad, or our kale. And then I'm just going to kind of fold it in half as much as I can because it is curly and out of control. And then we'll just kind of thinly slice it. And again, moving your fingers back, being aware of anything on your cutting board. And this will be part of our panzanelle salad. A little bit of kale in there. So we'll add that. And I'm going to check on our quinoa, and then we'll be right back. It's going to be a good salad once my ingredients stop leaving me. We've lost quinoa. Almonds, kale, where'd you go? Come back. Hey guys, and welcome back. We are cooking our quinoa panzanella salad, just in time for our quinoa to be done. So our quinoa has been cooking for about 20 minutes. Turn the stove off. It is nice and fluffy. I always like to take a fork to kind of fluff it up. All the water's been absorbed. Get a quinoa facial like that but this is good to go. So this is a cold salad. Obviously you don't want to add hot quinoa to our cucumbers or tomatoes and all our other ingredients. So I'm actually going to put this on a plate to cool down, which I have here. 
use this fork to taste test later. So you can put this on a sheet pan if you want. You could leave it in the pot to cool, but I'm hungry and we're making salad today. It's hot outside and I want to eat. I want to eat my food. So, and I actually thought a cup, a cup of quinoa wouldn't make a lot, but this makes a whole plate full of just the grain itself. So it's definitely a lot of food if you want to make it again for meals, for friends, family, lunches, it's perfect. Try and get every little bit of that crispy quinoa that we toasted. Oops. Put this aside to cool down just a little bit. You can even put it in your fridge to cool down. Actually, that's what I might do. A little cooking hat. Your refrigerator is not an instant chiller, but it will cool down ingredients. Actually, I'm putting it in the freezer. Just to kind of cool it down just a little bit quicker. Sorry they had to see my fridge. Oops. Okay. I say cool in your freezer. Don't let me forget about it. I won't forget about it. But just try and cool down on your counter until you make all your ingredients. We're trying something new. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So while that's cooling, we have our kale, cucumber, and um, tomatoes already chopped up over here. We're going to make our vinaigrette first thing with our vinaigrette is mustard. We're doing a lemon vinaigrette and I have some whole grain mustard here uh, currently but it's just the last little bit in the jar and isn't it annoying I have found that you're trying to scoop out the last running bits and you can't get it out and you feel like you're end up wasting anything. Chefy tip. I had a little bit extra vegetable broth left over from cooking the quinoa. quinoa. Oops. And I pour about a quarter of a cup in there. Shake it, and that gets all the remaining mustard or dressing. Sometimes I add water to like a little thing of barbecue sauce to try and get it all out. Plus it loosens it up for the dressing, so there you go. Mustard be gone. Mm. Recycle that. So we have that in the bowl. Next step is the lemons. You need about two lemons, depending on how juicy they are. And I meant to do that first, but we're learning. Let me grab another bowl. So remember in the previous videos, I said you don't need a fancy juicer or press to get the juice out of the lemons, which is still correct. So you can get a bowl and then you're just gonna move your fork throughout those membranes of the lemons to get all those juices out. We don't need the zest, so if you need the zest before you juiced it, do that first. So that gets about all the juice out. I'm going to show you a little secret in a minute. Not really a secret, but it, options for yourself. All right. So that's one lemon. We need two lemons. The first thing is to juice your lemons in a bowl if you don't have like a juicer or something that prevents the seeds from falling out. Letting the seeds sit and then getting a spoon and just fishing out the seeds which is pretty easy, right? Because we're not adding it to any other ingredients. This is its raw form of lemon juice, and it's easier to fish out. Or, if you have it, you can use a sieve. This one's the only one I could find today. It's a little large, but you could use a sieve to ensure that no seeds go into whatever you're making. So those are two options I wanted to show you. You can juice uh, citrus first, fish out the seeds. You can use your hand. You know, some people will use their hand and the seed falls out and you can catch it. I'm really bad at catching it with my fingers like that, and I just feel like you're extra stressed. Even me being a, prof a professional cook turned home cook, I don't like to worry about the seeds like that. So you can use a sieve, you can do all your citrus in a bowl first, and that's great. So a little couple tips for you guys, still using a fork. I have a juicer in the um, drawer, but I don't want to use it because this works perfectly fine. All right. Move that around. Put that aside. Put this aside. Wash my hands. Okay, so in here we have our residual, or about a quarter cup of mustard, maybe not a quarter cup, 
couple tablespoons of mustard. You can use yellow mustard, you could use Dijon, you can use uh, the stone ground mustard with the seeds, whatever you have available. Uh, two lemons, juice of two lemons. And then to this, I would salt, pepper, and olive oil. And you know he's on my nerves because he's hard to handle, so I'll use the jug underneath, back stock. And usually when you make a vinaigrette, you want to, they say you can, you have to continuously whisk and, you know, whisk as you drizzle in the oil, which is correct. But the great thing about adding oil, um, oil, mustard to your dressing is it helps emulsify the watery element of the lemon juice and the fatty of the olive oil. It's kind of like a, a cousin that combines the family together, if you want to look at it that way. So about a quarter of a cup, don't need a ton of dressing. And see, now it's not separated, which is nice. So that mustard kind of grabs the elements of the lemon juice, the watery elements of lemon juice, and the fatty parts of the olive oil and just keeps it nice and together without separating for the most part. So that's a little tip too. I always add mustard to my vinaigrette because it helps the whatever, like vinegar or whatever the case may be, combined with olive oil a little bit better. So we have that. I'm gonna have salt and pepper. Need another little spoon. And we're not adding salt and pepper to any other part of this salad. So this really needs to pack a punch um, because it's gonna season not only the quinoa, but the kale, the cucumbers, the tomatoes, and all the other ingredients. So about a teaspoon of salt. And you know I love my black pepper, so about a half three quarter teaspoon of that. And that's coarse ground, because I like the texture and like to see the pepper. So we have that. I'm gonna taste it really quick. Needs more lemon juice. And needs more salt. So we're gonna do that. Grab our guy back over here. And actually it might need some garlic powder because I don't have any fresh garlic right now. So I'll probably add some garlic powder to this too. I'm also adding cheese to this as well, feta cheese. So I don't want to add too much salt because that feta cheese adds like a briny salty factor. So I have to be cognizant of that. That. Some salt. Yes, I use that to dip in. All right, a little bit, another half teaspoon of salt. We should be good to go in our dressing. Oh, with the garlic powder. Yum, delicious. Don't mind my cupboard, it's a little messy. And then I would say just a couple sprinkles, like a quarter teaspoon. And it will taste again. It's nice, light, fresh. I love this vinaigrette for salad. You can make it in a, like a sealed jar and just shake it, shake it, shake it. If you want, you don't have to whisk it. There's a couple different methods for that. Oh yeah, that's so much better. So good. So I'm gonna check on our quinoa that's cooling in the freezer so we don't forget about her. Okay. So we have our cooled quinoa. We have our tomato cucumber kale mixture. We have our um, toasted almonds. And I didn't even think about this. I've always had nuts to this salad, but if you do have a um, nut allergy, you can definitely leave this part out. You can also leave the cheese part out if you don't do dairy um, or if you have a dairy allergy. So this salad slash panzanella salad is very versatile with the ingredients you can use or omit. So that's a good tip that I forgot to say. I do mise en place, but I forgot the cheese in the fridge. So we're gonna keep it cold while we were doing our separate steps. All right, so we have a vinaigrette. We have our quinoa that's cooked. And then I also brought out some feta cheese. 
One of the things that I have learned to dress the salad evenly is actually put the quinoa in with the dressing since it's one of the main components and it almost absorbs the dressing and then it's just like even just distribution for it. So I like that part, that's nice. Plus you can kind of put everything in the bowl and just stir it. Try and get all that together. Oops, no, we're hiding underneath. I see you. Okay, and so we're gonna stir this around. And see it's already absorbing almost all of the dressing, which is nice. Creates a nice uniformity with it. Make sure everybody gets the same great bite. All right, so that's done. And then to our cold ingredients, which this is cool, but our cooler ingredients, we have feta cheese, which I almost grabbed goat cheese today because I was like, oh, that sounds really good. But I'm gonna go with what I know because I didn't wanna mess it up. I love the salad, forgot a knife. But feta cheese is so great. It can withstand the salad, doesn't break up a lot, doesn't get lost in the salad, which is nice. So we have our little feta cheese. And I'm just gonna break this up. I said cheese, I'm surprised Maggie's not in here, to be quite honest, for a piece of cheese. I'm not sure if she can have feta, but. So break this up just a little bit. It can be as fine as you want, as chunky as you want, I just don't want like a huge block of it, but I just break it up with my fingers. So we have our tomatoes, cucumbers, kale, our feta cheese, add in our almonds. And then we're gonna add in our quinoa, which has fully absorbed all of our dressing, which is nice. I'm actually gonna taste it to see if it needs anything else. Mm. Perfect. I do say so myself. So we're going to add this in. And then we're going to gently stir this together, keeping all of our ingredients in mind with the cucumbers, the kale, the cheese, not to break anything up. Look how good that looks for summer. It's a nice cool salad. It's almost an all in one meal. You can add chicken to this, you can add salmon would be nice, even a pork chop. This is a one dish that's kind of all encompassing. It actually makes my mouth water to be quite honest. It's so good. Yum. And that's as easy as it is. It's almost like a panzanella salad, but I swapped out the bread for the quinoa. But you have the cucumbers, the tomatoes, the kale. You know what I forgot? Red onion. I knew I was forgetting something. See, it happens to all of us. We're everyday cooks. Hold on. I gotta find my red onion in the fridge. I knew something was missing. Red onion. That's what I was missing. See, can't be great all the time. Red onion. And that completes it. I knew I was missing an ingredient. I couldn't figure it out. All right. So take a hundred. So I'm just slicing this onion down the horizontally. Couple slices and then that's how you get chops. This onion's big, so we're only gonna do about a half of it. That's what I was missing. Adoy. That's why you mise en place, cause you forget ingredients if you don't really think it through, but red onion. Okay. So there you go. Panzanella salad. Don't forget the red onion. Looks so good, so healthy, great summer salad. I think everybody would like. I'm gonna try this. Always forget to try the food. Get a bite of everything. Doesn't this look good? Mmm.
this is gonna be your next summer salad. Mm, mm, mm. You gotta make this, and you gotta come cook with me again. Summer salad. Panzanella style with quinoa. Yum. Come cook with me.